Hello everyone. Welcome to the VCDL configuration series part 2. I'm Omid and in this video I will teach you how to add a new carrier trunk to your system. You will need it when you want to call out using the soft phone that we have registered in the previous video. If you haven't watched part 1, please check the link in the description of this video. Let's get started. In order to have better understanding of what we want to do and why we need a trunk, I have provided this graph. Here is our VC, VC dial server in our internal network that is connected to the internet. We have a user 1001 that is registered in our VC dial server. If 1001 wants to call out, our system need to have a trunk to a carrier. It can be your local carrier in your country or it can be a global carrier. What we need from a carrier in order to register our trunk? We need the carrier IP address or domain name. For example here, my carrier domain name is voip.didww.com, a username and a password that we call it secret here as well. So, if we have these three items, we are good to go uh, to create a new carrier in our VCDial box. Now it's time to set up carrier in the VCDial. To set up a carrier, you need to select admin and then carriers. You will see these three carriers already configured by the VCDial as a default carrier. They are just for samples. I have created one carrier uh, based on our setup here as well. So when you, are, when you want to create a new carrier, actually you need to create add a new carrier. Then put the carrier ID, name, description, and select the user group that you have already created. Here is the first step that you are set up in the carrier. So uh, this is reserved word, so register. Then the first item is your username. That is our username is 22003 here. Then there is a dot. And after that, the password that is provided by your SIP carrier. So again, the reserve word, your username, and the secret or password at the IP address or domain name of your VoIP provider. Actually, it is the SIP server from your VoIP provider. So you put the domain name here and also the port. Port is not mandatory because usually the ports uh, of the carriers are 5060. This is the default port of SIP server. But uh, if your provider provides you any other port, uh, like 5070 or any other port, you just need to change it here. You don't need to select any template ID. Again, you will use your username in the brackets here. Here is the configuration for your codecs. Codecs are useful when you want to actually compress the voice. Uh, we have different type of codecs. Sorry, I have a typo here. And uh, this is my choice actually i checked with my carrier and i know they are using and uh, they are supporting opus codec gsm g729 eula and ayla and this is the sequence that i need uh, the codex to be used so if the provider provides opus for this trunk it will use opus first if it doesn't provide opus then it will go to the gsm g729 and etc so these two lines specify which codex we want to use for this trunk type friend this is a reserve word as well and also friend it has two type two other types user and peer that uh, set it as friend because then this trunk can be used just uh, can be used both for inbound and outbound your username again with the reserve word the userman username your secret the host is the IP address or domain name of your uh, carrier SIP provider. DTMF mode, 
let's set it by RFC 2830. It has two modes, audio mode and RFC 2833. Uh, uh, this is the default one. You can ask this from your provider, but uh, anyway, it's two options. If this doesn't work, if your DTMF didn't work, then set the audio. Uh, context that is uh, trunk inbound this is for incoming calls so if a uh, SIP provider sends you an incoming call then it will automatically go to this trunk go to this context that this context is actually for incoming calls of the uh, VC dial and then qualify equals to yes this is not mandatory but uh, uh, we set it so that we can see what is the status of our trunk our protocol should be set as SIP because this is a SIP trunk here is a variable. This variable, uh, a global string that we can use uh, in our dial plan. So, uh, what is the dial plan? I will create a video just for the dial plan. This is uh, something we have in asterisk because the VC dial actually is using a, a backend uh, open source telephony package with the name of asterisk. And this dial plan is actually the uh, programming language of the asterisk. But uh, in a short story this is how it works each x represent a, a digit for example let's say i want to call this number uh, so if i this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten x means any digit between zero to nine so, uh, if I want to call all numbers with 9 digits, that each x is actually between 0 to 9, means it means all 9 digits numbers, I can use this dial plan, as we can see here. Also for the VC dial and actually in the telephone system, we are usually using a prefix. This prefix uh, we will know why we need it in the next videos when we have created a campaign. But just uh, let it be there as 9. So that uh, when we want to call out, we actually, we don't need to press a 9, but the system will automatically add a 9 and then remove it. So what is uh, this style plan means? The first line says that if anyone calls any number that starts with 9 and 9 digits after that, the first thing that you are doing, uh, log the call. Actually, it's running an AGI function. Uh, it's an asterisk gateway eight interface function, and it will log the call. The second line will tell you dial our variable test SIP trunk that our test SIP trunk is SIP 22003. Actually, our SIP provider, and then dial the number that the customer entered that our user entered so it will dial the same number but it will remove the first digit so it will remove nine we call this style plan uh, i will create a video just for the dial plan to get it more familiar but uh, you can use this dial plan to call out for now and then set your trunk as active and submit so this is the step for uh, configure trunk in the VC dial but how do we know that uh, this trunk is registered uh, first thing you need to know that you need to wait about one minute so that this configuration applies to your VC dial uh, because VC dial is working uh, with some scripts in the cron job means they are running every one minute so this configuration will be updated in your sy system about uh, one minute after you have applied. So let's see how we can verify if our trunk is registered. If you are using Mac, you can just go to the terminal and SSH the system. If you are using Windows, you can use a, a tool such as, you can use actually there are a lot of tools such as uh, Putty, P-U-T-T-Y that you can download and use that for SSH to your server. So I will SSH to my VC dial server. my password and the command that you can use asterisk dash rx as I told you asterisk is the actually backend package 
that VC dial is using for uh, telephony matters. So as we search RX, SIP, show, peer, our peer name that is 22003. And then you can grab the status because we want to see a status, we don't want to see all the information. If I click, you will see it is OK. So our trunk is registered and delay is 11 milliseconds. That's OK. So this is how we are um, registering a trunk in the VCDL. In the next video, we will learn how to create campaigns and actually uh, use what we have done in, the, in this video and the previous video. Thank you for watching.